Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and today's project is this simple pair of pajama shorts. I call them pajama shorts because these are the kind I like to sleep in but there's no reason you can't wear them outside the house depending on what fabric you use. These are actually very loose fit and they are based on a pair of boxer shorts. I have a link below with a pattern that is free to newsletter subscribers and you can grab that and use it to make this and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's talk about supplies. First, I hope you visited that link below and followed the instructions in that post to get the free pattern. Um, once you have that, you need to cut out your fabric. So I have two front pieces here and I have two back pieces cut out. And it's important to note that when you're cutting this out, you should have the fabric folded in half so that you get mirror image pieces, one for each side of your body. I also have elastic and that's going to be for the waistband. I have this little tool, this is called a bodkin and I've linked this tool below. This is to help pull the elastic through the waistband casing. If you don't have a bodkin though, you can use a safety pin and do the same thing. I have pinking shears. These are scissors with these diagonal teeth on them and I'm going to be using them to finish some of the seams. If you don't have pinking shears, I've got a link below to other ways to finish the seams and you can use those. Now the first step to making these is going to be to place the either the fronts or the backs. You can start with either one. But you want to place them right sides together and we are going to sew this curved seam here. Since this is the back piece, this is um, the back crotch seam. You can pin your fabric together if you feel like it's shifting and it's not going to stay together precisely. Um, I am just going to go ahead and wing it. Note that there is a one half inch seam allowance on this pattern. So this red line here is my half inch seam allowance on my machine. And I'm going to line the edge of the fabric up to that as I stitch. that seam sewn, I am going to go ahead and pink the edges with my pinking shears to finish this seam. And what that means is I'm cutting close to the stitching line but not through it and cutting off this excess seam allowance. Because it is making all these little diagonal cuts in the edge of the fabric, that means that the fabric will not be able to easily fray. to note that I am using quilting cotton to sew this particular pair. Um, this is an easy fabric to work with, particularly for beginners. It's 100% cotton and it comes in lots of fun prints like this print that I designed. After you have done whichever one you started with, the front or the back, you need to do the crotch curve for the other piece as well. Once you have that front seam sewn and the back seam sewn, it is time to open up your two pieces. Make sure both of those curvy points are towards the bottom. And we're going to be matching up the side seams. Now you'll notice on this pattern, the back is wider than the front. That's because the seams are moved a little bit forward on this design and also because you usually have more stuff in the back than the front. So I'm going to match up one side seam and pin if necessary and go ahead and stitch and finish that. And just like those crotch seams, I can use my pinking shears to finish this edge. Okay, now I need to match up the other side seam and go ahead and stitch that together. Okay. 
Okay. So I've got both of my side seams sewn up. There is one seam left to sew, and that is down here. This is what's going to form the two different legs once I sew this together. So I want to take those crotch points and I want to match them up. And depending on how you've been finishing your seams, um, you could open up that seam, but what I recommend so that you don't run into problems with your casing is to push one, like the front, both seam allowances that way, and then on the back, push them both the other way. And then I'm going to use a pin to make sure those match up. And then you're going to match from the center towards the edge. Okay, and I'm going to stitch right across there. When you get to that center seam, make sure your seam allowances remain with one pointing one way and one pointing the other. Okay, the next few steps are going to require the iron and the ironing board. I want to pay attention down here on the crotch seam, which way my seam allowance is pointing. And then I want to go up to the top here and point my seam allowance the same way. And I'm going to create the waist casing of my shorts now. So first thing is I'm going to press that seam allowance in the direction that it's pressed or that it's stitched down at the bottom. And then I'm going to be folding over my waist raw edge here. And I want to show you a trick. I'm using a piece of cardstock here. I've used a ruler to draw lines on it. So I want to sew a one quarter inch or press a one quarter inch fold. So I'm going to move my fabric to the one quarter inch line and then use my iron to press that in. And I want to make sure that my little cardstock guide here is all the way up to the edge to the fold. And I need to do that all the way around my shorts. When I get to this next seam, I want to press it the same direction that I pressed the earlier seam. And the reason you want all your seams to go the same direction is because that's going to make it easier to insert your elastic. So every time I encounter a seam now, I'm going to be pressing it that direction. Okay, once I've pressed all the way around the waistband, you'll notice that I am using one inch elastic. So then I'm going to press around the waistband again, and I want to be at the one inch line this time. So I'm gonna line my folded edge up to my one inch line. And I wanna go just past it, just to have a little bit of wiggle room with this elastic. Maybe like an eighth of an inch past. Another reason I like to use quilting cotton for these types of projects is because it holds those pressing lines really well so I don't have to pin. If your fabric is not holding the pressing lines, you are going to want to add pins to make sure this casing stays. Finally, I want to press around the bottom. And I like to take, this is the front of my shorts, I like to take my center seam, the inseam here, and I like to press it towards the back of my shorts. So press it that way. And then I'm just going to press a quarter inch hem all the way around. And you can use your guide if you want, but because there are some curves here, um, sometimes it's easier to just eyeball this. Measure in, when in doubt. Okay, you can see on my side seam here, my seam is pressed that way, so I want to make sure that at the bottom it is pressed in the same direction as well. And once I have pressed it up one quarter inch all the way around, I want to do that again. And you can even go three eighths of an inch here instead of a quarter inch, just to have a tiny bit deeper hem if you prefer. 
I'll make your shorts an eighth of an inch shorter. Okay, once you've got one done, you need to do the other side, making sure you're pressing that inseam in the same direction. So here is what your shorts should look like once we've done all that pressing. And again, if your fabric is not holding that pressed edge, then add pins. But you should have a casing along the top edge and you should have hems pressed along the legs. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew in a name tag on the back of my shorts here. And you can tell which one is the back. If you hold the center there of the crotch seams where you match them up, the side that pulls up higher, you can see how much higher that pulls up, that's the back. And so that is where I want to sew my name tag, right here. So if you're interested in custom name tags, um, I have a post linked below that talks about how I made these. Once you have that done, you're going to want to stitch right along the edge of this casing that you've pressed. And I usually start close to where I inserted the name tag. You want to sew right on the folded edge there so that you have the full inch for your elastic to go through. Once you get close to where you started stitching, slow down. You're going to want to leave about a one and a half to two inch gap. Because I already pressed the hems on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch those first. And I wanna show you if your machine has what's called a free arm option, this is where you use it. So my machine, this piece pulls off and then I've got this arm here that's smaller that I can put narrower pieces of fabric right around so that I can make sure I'm not sewing any of my legs together. And to hem it, I'm just going to sew close to that folded edge. Now, if your machine not have a free arm option. Here's my preferred method for sewing a hem or a small circle with no free arm. I like to go and turn this so it's right side out and then I'm going to put my presser foot inside the circle of the leg. ready to put in my elastic now and here is the gap I left in my casing. To use this bobbin, uh, bodkin tool you're going to clamp it over one end of the elastic and push this ring down to hold it tightly. If you're using a safety pin, poke your safety pin through one end of the elastic and then close the safety pin. And then you want to go in the same way that you press your seams. So if you press all your seams that way, you want to take your elastic in that way. So I'm going to push it in through. And then you just use that safety pin or bodkin to pull the elastic. You squinch the fabric up and then pull the elastic through. Make sure you do not pull the end of the elastic through all the way into the casing. We are going to be gathering up this top edge. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you are not twisting your elastic as you pull it through. So you want to make sure it is staying flat the whole way through. Okay, once you get that other end out, again, make sure you're not twisting here. You want to put those two loops together, or the two ends together. And what I like to do at this point is pin them to my fabric. 
So my pin is going through both ends of the elastic and through the fabric. And then that way I can kind of stretch the rest of the elastic in and check for twists again. Okay, you do need to leave just a little bit visible outside. Go ahead and unpin it and you can stretch out what you need. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put this under the machine and sew these two ends together. So there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can sew a box around that elastic if your machine will only do a straight stitch. However, if your machine will do a zigzag stitch, I actually prefer to use the zigzag and then stitch over these two overlapped edges. And then I like to back stitch the whole way. Once that, those ends are sewn together, you can give this a few tugs. That should distribute the elastic within the casing. And then we need to sew up this gap where we left it. So just put it back under the machine, overlap your stitches from one end of the gap. Oops, make sure you switch back to a straight stitch. And overlap your stitches again. And cut all those extra threads. And then I like to give that waistband a few more pulls to make sure the elastic is distributed nicely. And there you go. You're done with your shorts. For more beginner projects, check out this playlist that I've got that has very simple projects that you can start learning to sew with.